Hey guys, Max here. Uh, we're in the studio and I want to give you guys some tips on doing a Lego room. Uh, it can be quite a task if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, and I don't know what I'm doing. I've kind of learned it along the way. So hopefully some of the things that I've learned uh, I can pass on to you guys and help save you some time to build more Lego. Because I would rather be building Lego rather than trying to organize and figure out a thousand th different things that I'm doing for a Lego room. Uh, so the first tip that I got, I got five tips uh, for today uh, that I've got. And the first one is storage. So for me, uh, fortunately I have a lot of room uh, at our old house. Uh, we did not have as much room, but I didn't have this much Lego either. Uh, but uh, for uh, here, I have a ton of space. Now I used to uh, organize my Lego by uh, color, I do believe, uh, which is okay if you have a little bit, you don't have too much, but once you start getting a lot, uh, it becomes overwhelming to try to get into bins and get those out and try to find what you want. Uh, so I started uh, sorting by part type, and I use uh, Bricklinks, uh, part names, and uh, an alphabetical order. So uh, down here on this part, so this kind of, this starts my room into here. So down here on this end uh, is covered up. And we start down here with uh, aircraft and animal accessories, animal body parts. And it just goes all the way around uh, my display table here with uh, the different types of part types. And there's, it's it's all the way around. So you can kind of see that way. Uh, there's there's old silver buckets. If you know what those, what those are, um, I still have all those. But uh, for, for storage, I use uh, these Sterilite bins. See if we can get under here. And I'll kind of show you two different options on what I do for uh, storing uh, Lego parts that I'm not using. So here, these are twos. Uh, the one by two bricks, they are all in individual bags, individually colored. Uh, there is enough there to do that. Now, when I get into uh, other types of parts, let's take, uh, I use these a lot. These are all in one bag. It's all one by ones with uh, stud on the side. So if I've got a good idea what's in here. Uh, some of the, a lot of this I keep labeled, um, some of it I don't, um, I kind of know where uh, everything is, but for alphabetical purposes, it helps me get to them quicker to put them away. Uh, so some parts I will separate by color, and if I've got, if I've got the room, I will uh, put them together. And this is just, this is a lot of bricks. I used <laughs> a lot of my stuff for the Avengers Tower, so... Uh, I am missing a lot, uh, so I'm going to have to to restock some things. And to restock stuff is by doing this. When a store runs their clearance, if it's on clearance, I'm getting it. And that's how I kind of uh, restock my supply is off of clearance Lego from Walmart, Target, or any other store that's doing it. I try to stay away from Best Buy. Sorry, Best Buy, but uh, you have they just sent stuff. This is terrible. I, Boxes have been opened and nothing's in them and they still deliver it. It's, it's interesting, but I've stopped ordering from Best Buy. Uh, but that's my storage here. Um, this goes, does go all the way around. There's nothing on this side. Let me see it. Uh, I kind of use that uh, as an entrance to get under there to get any, keep a lot of box sets underneath here too, um, under this table. Um, and then... Some of my favorite parts I will keep uh, up here, uh, tiles. I am a huge tile fan. I got tons of these. These are all done by color. Now, if you wanna do a part type by an individual color, your storage, the price of this can really get up quick on uh, just getting stored these storage bins. I have found these, There's we got a store here called Aldi. It's ALDI. I don't know if well, where all they are, but for here, uh, once a year, they will run a sale on these uh, little bins here, and they grab on the end. 
so they don't come out, which makes me look like I'm not telling the truth now, but they do. They'll, they'll grab on the end uh, so they don't fall out. Um, I had bins before that you just come out and everything would fall out, but uh, these, have, these have worked pretty well. Uh, I don't have too many of them. I've, I've only grabbed a few, uh, but I've gotten these on clearance. They have different type. They have these style too uh, with the bigger bins, and uh, we throw... Uh, you know, flowers, minifigure, extra minifigure parts that if I get something from a yard sale, I will go through and try to part certain figures together and and uh, get a complete uh, minifigure. It's all Technic stuff. I do not like Technic at all. Um, I'm more of a Lego brick type building person, um, but Technic does get its own designated uh, area. Since there's, I don't have a lot of it, it's better to organize it this way than trying to throw it in some uh, bags together and, and bins down here. It, it helps me learn a little bit too because I do try to learn how to, to build with that kind of stuff. But that's uh, my storage and organizing just for parts there. Uh, we'll go over here and we'll take a look at the kids and I'll show you what I do with the kids stuff. Alright, so this is the kids area and this is uh, under a remodel. We're moving, we moved all their American Girl stuff out and we got a little Lego space for them, but this is kind of their storage area. I had everything in bags, uh, kind of like this here. So uh, we had, that's the bright green, uh, we have pearl gold, and these were all just, every color was in a bag. And it kind of got time consuming and difficult to uh, go through these and find what they want. And they really weren't building uh, as much as what I thought they were going to. So now that we've done this, this has become much more popular. And it, it's, it's a lot easier to pick up too. Uh, when you're getting uh, parts out and, and in and you, you can just kind of throw them in there and it, it works out a lot better. So this is kind of their, their storage area and uh, they're, we're getting their play area together. We're gonna get them some build tables and, and uh, work on a couple things, but that's theirs. Uh, all, all these are uh, sorted by color and uh, not by part type so and the kids don't mind that they don't they like going through all of them and, and finding different parts and it's kind of fun to do with them some of the smaller stuff uh like uh nougat uh, we, got some, we got a technic bag some of the ones that don't take up an entire bin we just kept them together uh just for a lack of space or lack of bins if we had you know, 30 bins down here, it, it would take up a whole lot more space. So that's kind of consolidating that and making it a little bit easier. But that's the uh, storage for the kids. And that is tip number one. All right, tip number two is a sorting and building area. Uh, this is my building area. And sometimes it gets overtaken by the kids. But, uh, and this is also my sorting area. So... Uh, I use a blanket uh, on top of a table to help me grab parts easier. So I will typically sit uh, here and I'll build uh, in this space. This is a hard surface. I like the hard surface for, for building better. It gives me, uh, yeah, it helps me get pieces connect better. So picking up parts though can be difficult on the hard surface versus the soft blanket. So we'll take these for example. I can just about grab all those. Uh, on that soft surface on here, it is, I get about half. So it's just a little bit easier if I gotta grab something um, on the soft blanket versus uh, the hard table. So if you're uh, looking for something like this, do do a, do a corner desk. And we've also got a corner desk upstairs that we got off of Amazon. It's, it's kind of nice, um, a lot kind of, it's a lot smaller than this. But this is uh, an eight foot Sterilite table. Uh, that gives me lots of room to uh, do my build here, uh, put parts around. I have my book here if I need to, or sometimes I'll get on the uh, the computer and pull up instructions there uh, and go off of that. So this is kind of the, uh, the build area and then the uh, sorting area, and this helps me get uh, a lot done a lot quicker. Now, one thing that I'm going to change with this, I do believe, so I, I like this. I like this blanket, it's fine. But what it does, it hangs down so far and then it's, it's blocking my air. So I need to uh, fix that. Um, so uh, 
I found, I was, I was painting the kids' room the other day, and I noticed these, this drop cloth wasn't a bad material. Uh, it was kind of um, thick. If you get, if you get this here, let's, this is on my table. This is a sheet. This is too thin. Uh, I tried using a sheet, but it does not let you pick up as many parts as the blanket does that get your fingers down there versus the hard surface table. So it, I mean, it works, but not as well as what I like to. So this had a little bit, it's about the same thickness as that blanket, um, maybe a little thinner, but I'm gonna get this. This is a six by nine, and I believe I'm gonna put this on this table here, and then uh, this will become my build area. So in order to do that, I gotta take all this stuff down and move it and then put the drop cloth this is just a paint paint drop cloth that's all it is um but it's a eight foot by four foot table it's a six by nine uh drop cloth so that should fill in there pretty well let me get my air out and hopefully add some more sorting space i would like more sorting space that's what i use more the building area i don't need as much so i'm okay with with swapping them um i think it'll work better so uh that is tip number two on uh, sorting and building. All right, tip number three is table choice. And I had uh, a ninja sneak in behind me, and that is Blossom. <laughs> Blossom, she heard me down here doing a video, and she likes doing these, so she wanted to come in and help with tip number three. Tip number three is uh, table choice, choosing the right table for you. And... These, the, my city is sitting on custom tables that I built. It is a lot more solid, uh, for what I wanted. Uh, these Sterilite tables, they flex. And when you, uh, try to put a city together on this, it does not work at all. There are things, you know, Ikea offers stuff, um, from where, where I'm located, I can't get them. I'm, I'm, I'm in the boonies, uh, and it's just, it's hard to get to a Kia or somewhere to get a decent table. Uh, so I just, I went to Lowe's, got some material and built these tables and we're going to, we're going to build one of these. I'm, I'm going to build one for the kids. I'm going to do it a little bit. Well, I'm going to do the same, but a little bit different. Uh, so this has, uh, five ply plywood. Um, and I got this all before, uh, the COVID pandemic hit. And so it was not badly priced. Um, now I think the price is a little uh, out there. But when you look down uh, the table here, it is nice and smooth, nice and solid. Sterilite table, you're going to have bends in it and not everything's going to connect right. And it was just it was just a mess. So uh, these tables work out great. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you how I did these tables in another video. But... When you're picking your table for your city or for your display, get something solid. Uh, it's going to last you a while. Might spend a couple dollars for it if you're handy enough. Uh, build your own. The reason I like these tables is because... She done disappeared. She likes crawling underneath there. So uh, there, there is a lot of room under there. And, and when I, one of the reasons I, I built these tables, one of the main reasons, I think, uh, if you notice, I don't have... Uh, brackets right here uh, so running from here to here there should be a bracket um, I built them to where I don't really need a bracket I've stood up on these tables uh, we lean on them we, we play on here and it gets me more storage space uh, this uh, here you can see this brace here takes away if I want to put any bins there so this these tables are just not for sorting or putting anything underneath you can get like one bin in the middle and that is it and it's, it's not very conducive to anything that I wanted to do except for using it as a building or sort table. So that's what uh, these are for over here. So when you're doing your table choice uh, for your building or your sorting, get something that is, you know, solid enough uh, to be able to push down. And when you push it down on parts, it'll give a little bit, but I'm okay with that. Um, Sometimes I wish it was a little bit more solid uh, when I'm doing my modular buildings or something like that when you have a lot of space being taken up. But when you're doing smaller things like cars or uh, Ninjago stuff, anything like Ninjago stuff, right? Yeah. 
Um, so he'll, uh, those, those smaller builds um, work a little bit better. So uh, that's our tip for number three is a table choice. Uh, finding something good for that. All right, tip number four is dusting. Probably the least favorite thing to do of anybody, but if you want your city looking good, if you want your display looking good, uh, you got to do it. So I do it once a day. Every day I come down, I give everything a little uh, quick dust. Uh, when dust sits on something for a while and you don't dust it, let's say you go a month without dusting anything, it will stick on there and you cannot get it off unless you wash it. Or and It might even be a bonus. It might be longer than that. But if you leave it on there for a while, it's going to be a pain to get off. Uh, so what I do is uh, I have a Swiffer duster, and Blossom's got one here. She's going to show, show us how, how we do it here. So go ahead, ma'am. Yeah. There we go. So I've got uh, the wand uh, Swiffer duster, and I cannot think of what it's called. I think it's like a 360 Swiffer duster. That's what it's called. Um, and you can see the pad. I've used it for a while. The pad on it is pretty uh, dirty. That's not, not too bad, but it gets... I probably should put a new one on there, maybe. Um, but that gets the main areas. Uh, it's also, it can be angled. Um, it can be extended uh, to get even further kind of into the city because, you know, I don't have any real, uh, I don't have a hole in the middle to climb up in there like I see some people do. Uh, I just, I've got all city. Um, so that'll get me uh, a lot of areas, especially like down in, if I need to get down in here or something. Uh, it gets it gets pretty quick, pretty easy. And... Uh, that's for the, the main areas. Now, the smaller areas, uh, we use, you want to show it here? You can hold it up. We use. Yeah. We use makeup brushes. They, uh, get, they get the flags, fire helmets, 1932s. <laughs> yeah. So, that gets more of our smaller areas, our little crevices. Um, and we will uh, just kind of knock the dust off there uh, to the road. And then we can get it with the, the regular silver duster. So, uh, we have a smaller one here and it's got the little protective case on it and we kind of get into out there here we go uh we'll get into these smaller areas and hit them see if we can get it down there and doors we just kind of get the dust off of there and then the swiffer duster will get the rest of it and look at that and now you've kind of basically dusted your top there and you can go down and get your get your window sill or anywhere a flat surface is sticking. Sometimes uh, you gotta get your slopes. Um, you gotta be you know, easy. How deep your slopes are. You gotta be easy with it. Yeah. Because I just broke a piece. Yeah, and the, the reason I don't like uh, using this across stuff, this will grab. Uh, you can kind of run along the roof, but it will kind of grab those parts and make it a little bit more difficult. So you can kind of just kind of dab it and it'll pick up stuff. Um, but this this does a lot better uh, when, uh, let's say, I don't know, 15 years ago, maybe a little longer, I would used to use a paintbrush. And bristles are uh, a little bit more tough. And but they never scratched my older Lego. The new stuff, it'll scratch. And so I had to stop using a paintbrush. I scratched up some Legos. I was like, oh, well, how did I do that? And it ended up being the, the paintbrush I was using. So we switched to uh, this here. And these uh, guys, they like I said, they work uh, good for the small areas. Now, when we were buying these, my wife and I were uh, in the makeup aisle. And she had a pack. And I had a pack. And there was a couple standing beside us. Yeah, probably about two feet away. And I was like, you know, this one would work really good. Uh, and it won't leave as many lines. And... And I noticed they were standing beside me, and I started talking even louder. And I was like, I'm going to get this makeup brush. And she's like, well, if you get this pack, I'll get these and use that out of that. And they were just looking at us like we were crazy. Like, I was, I don't know. But I, I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. And uh, just talking about me buying a makeup brush that for a guy who doesn't need makeup. Because uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pretty, aren't I? <laughs> um, so that's our uh, tip number four is dusting. Uh, if you guys uh, have any tips or suggestions on that you can always drop in the comments and and uh, i'm always looking for ideas so uh, but that's uh tip number four uh dusting
All right, tip number five, our last tip for today is display. Uh, when you are doing your display, uh, keep a couple things in mind. Uh, lighting uh, is one. Uh, when I did my Lego room, I did it with uh, four lights to try to make it look like the bottom of a Lego brick. Um, I, I think this would be a, I don't know, I'd have to look it up. Um, I want to say a three by three, like a plate, but anyway. Uh, or studs, you know, two by two stud. Yeah, that's what you're thinking. I gotcha. Um, but uh, keep in mind lighting. Um, some people will throw lighting in their sets, but uh, lighting is very important uh, when you're doing your display. Uh, another thing to think of is your focal points on what you want to do. For me, uh, for my display that I want to do, I want the buildings to be a focal point, so I don't throw a whole lot of uh, minifigure life into this because I'm more of a... Uh, yeah, I like I like the architectural style of the buildings, and I don't want to be taken away from something. And something that drives me up a wall is this. I gotta slide along the wall here because we're tight. Is Green Goblin. Now I think the Daily Bugle is a fantastic looking building, but every time I come in here and look at this set, I'm drawn right to the Green Goblin busting out of this thing because well it looks pretty cool. Uh but for me, I don't like it because I wanna see the building. I wanna uh, you know, see the TVs going around and, uh, you know, this, the signs up top here and uh, just, just everything that kind of goes along with this building, you know, the, the railing and everything that they did. Uh, so that, that bugs me. I might change it one day. We'll see. Um, but like Ninjago City, these are great, but there are so much going on in these things that I don't know where to look half the time uh, just to see something that looks good. So... Uh, when I you're go doing, straight to looking at this. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so when you're doing a display, try to keep in mind what is important to you um, and don't overtake it from something else. If you like minifigures, uh, that's what you want your uh, focal point to be. You know, we have some, let's go over here. We have some minifigures that we do like. We have them up here. They're kind of on their own. They're away from the main display. Uh, we try to keep them uh, to where they can be easily viewed and not have your focal point taken away. Uh, we were doing our park. Uh, I I didn't, there, there was a lot that goes into a park and I didn't want to uh, oversaturate it with, with different features. So I really want to try to keep it uh, less is more. Uh, so we just did, I mean, we could do a sandbox in here. We could do a seesaw, but throwing all that stuff in here would probably take a focal point away of a couple of things that make it a park when you look at it. Um, so I wanted that alley in there. Uh, I wanted the tree. Um, I didn't want to put too many trees in here because I didn't want to take away from uh, the trees that are in here. So when you see it, you kind of see the whole thing and not just one thing that's, or 20 different things that make it look like one. So uh, like our uh, Avengers building, this, I, I went back and forth on if I wanted to add, you know, someone fighting on the side of it or uh, just some explosion figure features on it. And that was one thing that I wanted to do was Hawk running upside the building. But when I was working on it, Hawk running upside the building just takes away from the building. And you it just takes your focal point away from everything that was going on. And I feel like sometimes you can get too many de details into something to where you lose what you're doing. Yeah, you don't, you don't get to see uh, what you want people to see. So when, when people come in here and they take a look at this, they're like, wow. Avengers building and then and then they start looking at everything else and their their focus is not taken off of uh, the, the city so even though that there is uh, 16 buildings in here probably a little bit more with the townhouses but uh, with I think, I think there's 16 mod modulars and you, you don't get uh, taken off of something so just keep in mind your focal point uh, and, and what you want to do and try not to put uh, too much into it um we also do uh separate displays so like for example over here we have uh mainly iron man um but a couple of avengers in there you know we have our uh, big six uh with hawk and them kind of center stage but i didn't want this to get overtaken by sets now i could probably throw a quinjet in here or a guardian ship or something like that but that would overtake uh what i was trying to do so I really tried to just leave it uh, Iron Man, um, and, and that's it. So maybe one day I'll, I'll go over, you know, do a video on everything that I have up here 
um, and uh, show you that. But just uh, trying to keep it to one thing and not really uh, blast a bunch of things up here. This this is my train hole. This train's supposed to go through here. It's supposed to come out the other side. And like Lego cups. But uh, it kind of became just a, a catch for Star Wars figures um, that I really like. I've got more that just don't make the cut and coming up here. But um, there's a couple. We got uh, Rex and Brave Vizsla down there. But um, so that's that's where they ended up. Not a great display. No lighting. You gotta see it looks kind of kind of terrible there. But um, you know other other displays we have. You know Marvel. It's just that's what it is. And I I probably could have gotten. Uh, more on here, uh, but again, doing way too many figures, you kind of get lost in what you got there. So we just have the MCU figures here. We don't have every uh, Marvel figure. I think. How many am I short on mini figures, Blossom? Huh? I think I, I think I need about thirty more. Oh. Marvel Marvel figures. Oh Marvel. Yeah. So we got our bad guys up here, and that kind of leads you on the way out. So when you're on the way out, you're like, oh, there's more up there. And that's all of our uh, MCU baddies uh, from the movies. Then there are more bad guys. You know, we've got Craven the Hunter, but uh, he doesn't make it up there because he wasn't in the MCU technically. Uh, maybe one day he'll get get up in there. But um, I think I need about 30 more just Marvel figures to complete the superhero theme uh, for Marvel, um, which we're working on those. And we've got a couple uh, in our cart to order, but for now, uh, we're not. But um, that is our... Uh, tip number five for our display, probably the most important tip. Uh, if you guys got any suggestions or ideas, uh, just drop them in the comments or you can send us messages or whatever you want to do. So we're always looking for ideas and, and thoughts and we're going to get back to working and building on Legos.